Kyoto Year 12 and 13. Um, this is question 2b from the very recent scholarship calculus paper. So I haven't got a nice um, scanned PowerPoint of this question, I've just written it out. This question looks like it's an integration question, and it is, but only a little bit. The hard part is really in the trig and in thinking what to do. So I want to talk um, about a dead end that some of you might go down. Um, it's certainly a dead end that I went down, and then I saw what I'd done wrong. Um, and as you know, a lot of the hardest part about scholarship questions is in figuring out how to start the problem. So in this case, we've got this integral here. So the definite integral between 0 and pi on 2 of this quotient. And we're asked to show that if we have this integral with n in it, so i n, take away i of n minus 1, which we'll substitute in there, we need to show that that simplifies all the way down to this thing here. So what we're going to do to start with is we're just going to write out an expression for this, and I'll do that on the next slide. So as usual, if you can pause the video and try each bit before I do it, you'll get more out of it. So try and write down that integral now and start the problem off. Okay, so you should get something like this. I n minus I n minus 1, capital I is just a symbol for integral, is the definite integral between those limits of sine of 2nx minus sine of 2 times n minus 1x dx. And because they're both over sine x, we've already got a common denominator, so it looks like that. Now, when you look at this, what you've got to decide what to do is which of our trig identities is going to help me with this problem. Um, I think what you do next is going to depend a lot on what you've practiced the most when you were doing level 3 trig. And if you were in my class, you would have had hammered into your brains this one, that sine of 2 theta was equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. So you might be tempted to go down this route of trying to use the fact that it's a 2 times something to expand there. Okay, now I did that when I tried this this morning and it led me down a wild goose chase. So I'm going to do that here just to show you what happens, all right, even though it's the wrong thing to do. Scholarship calculus is all about doing the wrong thing lots and lots of times and then finally doing the right thing. So our denominator is sine of x. So the top line is going to become 2 sine of nx times cos of nx minus 2 sine of n minus 1x cos of n minus 1x. All right, so that's what we get if we apply this identity. And I went on a bit further than that. I'm not going to do that here. But you can see that it's not really getting us that far because down here I've got this sine of x. And here I've still got sine of nx. I've got cos of nx, so it's getting even worse. It's not getting better at all. Right, so I looked at that. Now, I stupidly just kept on going. So there are a few more lines of that until I gave up. Um, so when that happens, you have to go back and think, okay, what else could I do here? What do I have? Look at the top line, the numerator. I've got sine of something minus sine of something else. So in its simplest form, that is sine c minus sine d, or a and B, right? It's a sine of something minus a sine of something else. And we know what we can do with those. We can turn it into a product. So I'm going to do that on the next slide, but there's your clue. So pause the video and try and use this identity to manipulate or to rearrange the numerator in there. So we won't worry about the sine x just yet. Okay, so the rule I'm using is that sine of c minus sine of d is equal to 2 cos half the sum sine half the difference. So what have we got? Well, writing it out one more time, we've got sine of 2nx minus 
sine of 2 times n minus 1 x over sine of x dx. So now using our difference to product formula, what do we get? Well, we're going to have 2, let's just, I'll put my denominator in, so there's sine of x down there. So 2 times the sum of those halved, so it's going to be 2 cos 2nx plus 2 times n minus 1, that's my minus sign, x over 2 times sine of the difference. So 2nx minus 2 times n minus 1x uh, over 2. Right, dx. Now you should be starting to feel happy at this point because even as you write it out you can see that some things are going to simplify out. So we've got 2 cos, hmm, well I've got, I'm going to expand this really slowly so some of you will be able to forward through a few frames here. So 2nx plus 2nx minus 2x. over 2. But the one that's making me really happy is what happens here. I've got 2nx minus 2nx plus 2x over 2. So look what's coming. I'm st and that's all divided by sine x. So I'm starting to get a common factor coming out. Okay, so most of you probably will be able to go right through to the end from here. Um, just in case you're tempted and you get stuck on the last bit, I'm going to talk a bit about flipper functions, or I think they're properly called indicator functions. So I'm going to talk quite a bit about this. So if you want, forward through the next couple of slides and just watch the last bit of the video. Okay, so now we're going to start simplifying this down. I'm going to do this every single step. Just forward through if you need to. So this first bit is now cos of 4nx minus 2x over 2 times sine 2x over 2 there. Here's my dx. And in the denominator I've still got sine of x. So you can see that that's going to simplify with these disappearing and we get 2 cos of 2n minus 1 times x dx. So that's very nice because that's starting to look pretty close to my final answer. So just go back to the start and have a, have a wee look at where we're trying to get to. Um, if I integrate cos, so finally we're getting some integration happening, I get this. Um, so it's cos will anti-differentiate to sine, so it'll be sine of this angle between these limits, but I have to um, divide through by 2n minus 1, because when I differentiate this function, of course, I'm going to have the chain rule happening here. Okay, so I'm skipping over that because this is a scholarship video. Uh, and now we're back to basically about merit level 3 stuff. So I need to evaluate this function, and I'm doing it for x at the limits x equals pi on 2 and x equals 0. So I'm going to do that on the next slide. So this, this equals 2 over 2n minus 1 times sine of... 2n minus 1 pi on 2 minus 2 over 2n minus 1 sine of 0. So it's time to draw our sine curve and we can see what's going on pretty easily. So there's my sine curve. Sine of 0 of course is 0, so that's going to ditch that bit for me. And let's see what's happening in here with these pi on 2 functions. So sine of 1 pi on 2 
of course is 1, sine of 3 pi on 2 is negative 1. So this is where the negative 1 to the power of something function is going to help us. So that's 5 pi on 2, and that's 7 pi on 2. So to show you what's going on here, some of you will be seeing this already, so I thought we'd do a little table, just as you probably did back in year 9 or 10 when you looked at linear patterns. So there's n, here's 2n minus 1, and this is sine of 2n minus 1 times pi on 2. Now if I were marking the scholarship exam and I saw someone with a table like this, I'd be really happy because it shows some nice systematic thinking. So if n is 1, this is a linear pattern, so 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1, and it's going up in 2, so it's going to be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Now the sine graph really helps because you can see what's happening. So for um, sine of 1 pi on 2, my value is going to be 1. For sine of 3 pi on 2, my value is going to be negative 1. 5 pi on 2, I'm back up here at positive 1. 7 pi on 2, negative 1. So all I need now is a mathematical way to say I either want a negative 1 or a 1, depending on whether n is odd or even. So n is odd, we want to get 1. And for n even, we want to get negative 1. The really easy way to do that is to use negative 1 to the power of something. So negative 1 to the power of n, in this case, is going to generate an odd number. So a, a negative, it's going to be negative 1 for the um, odd number powers. I don't want that. I want to have that when n is... 1, 3, or 5, this number needs to be 1, 1, or 1. So I can do that by using this. So this says take 1 off the power, and that will give me an odd number. Negative 1 to the power of an odd number will equal 1. Okay, so this is how I'm getting the very last bit here for my answer. So on a new slide, we're going to write that up. So we've got we had 2 over 2n minus 1.